This is the Black Watch Report, your podcast covering all things open division and contenders, the path to pro for Overwatch League. And here are your hosts, Thorn Rain and Kyle Wynn. And welcome back to episode 11 of the Black Watch Report. Sorry. I had a brain fart there. Um, Dorado gives me high blood pressure because, man, were those some intense matches this week. Um, but I'm your host, Thorn Rain, and as always, I'm on the wrong thing. <laughs> There's <laughs> Kyle, my co-host, Mr. Kyle Wynn. How you doing tonight, Kyle? I'm good. I was going to say something, but you figured it out, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm good. Cool. <laughs> uh, this 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 remembering to switch sources and change screens and everything so everything looks right, man. It gets confusing sometimes. Um, yeah, that's why I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're gonna start off as always as what we did this week. Uh, so Kyle, why don't you start us off and uh, how was your week this week? It was good. Um, I streamed a little bit earlier in the week. I played some D D, which was fun. Um, but then I've been streaming a little bit today. I'm going to stream afterwards. Um, I just played some PUBG and did nothing. And so then my friend and I are going to start a game of Civ 6 up here after this. And we'll see how that goes. What about you? What was your week? Um, I actually had a pretty eventful weekend. Um, just recently, I won a giveaway from the great folks over at the... Uh, High Noon Pick'em. Um, I won oh, one of their cool. Twitter contests, and I won an Overwatch League jersey. And oh, cool. And I went with Outlaws Jake. I mean, oh, okay. you, you got to go with the Jake rat. I mean, you, you got to. Uh, so my jersey came in this weekend, and then um, there's a local uh, tournament organizer who has recently started doing uh, Overwatch tournaments down at the cleveland public library so i took my kids down and we hung out at the library for about five or six hours uh Jeez. watched a little bit of overwatch league down there with a bunch of people um watched a bunch of local people play um got to meet the president of the uh case western reserve esports club uh, they are a TESPA team, so uh, once we start getting into the TESPA stuff, uh, I might be able to pull in a, a couple players from a, a local TESPA team that we could chat with. Um, it was pretty cool. cool. Uh, it was good being able to sit around a bunch of people in, with the same interests and you know discuss it plays during Overwatch League again, what was going on with the tournament. So it was it was a good weekend. I had a really good weekend this weekend. Um, nice, but. Uh, Wrapping all of the uh, the fun up of the past, we're going to move into the future. And what happened in the future? No iTunes reviews. We need iTunes reviews, people. I know you guys are out there listening. Um, just swing by the iTunes and give us a review. But uh, we did not get any Twitch followers, but we did get a YouTube sub. Uh, we are up on YouTube. Just search Blackwatch Report over on the YouTubes. And uh, you will find us. Right now, it's very sparse. We got a couple. Um, the the Arrow interview is up there. Last week's episode is up there. Um, I'm going to start working on video editing. And I'm going to try to get uh, some like plays of the week and stuff like that up there. Uh, just to kind of bolster the YouTube. But uh, thank you to Mr. Bob Jefferson with uh, the, the YouTube sub this past week. Uh, really appreciate it. If you could swing by the Twitch and follow us over there and throw a... a an iTunes review up, I'll mention you two more times. So if you did one each week, I'll talk about you three different times. That's all on you, Mr. Jefferson. All on you. Bob's getting on the map here. Oh, yeah. And I'll do that for anybody. If you want to spread your love out, I'll talk about you for three weeks. Uh, just I bring... like that's a phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, this is a uh, P3 
PG, like we are a clean show. I promise that was not meant in any dirty ways. Uh, don't take it that way. Um, but we are going to roll right into the news. So, Kyle, why don't you kick us off? Cool. So, first off, the amazing roster that is No Clout uh, has announced a new roster with the players as follows. Vita Coco on main tank, Hawk on flex DPS, or flex tank, um, Pugs on flex DPS, no current hit scan DPS, Dogman flex support, Dynomun on flex support, and Insomniac from the uh, team that's a disband, Toronto Esports, and I think he was at the Philly uh, Fusion Open thing, the yes. Fusion University Open call, I believe. He's like one of the farther I want to say he was in the top 12 top six top si to yeah top six yeah yeah um and then they have guppy and hypnot hypnot was the tank player i believe um who's now one of the coaches which is interesting yep. so that was cool that's that's the roster oh yeah and uh it, it's good to see that they stuck together and they're gonna you know, try to work things out and get back mm -hmm. up there and work their way back into the trials. trials um but moving on to the next part of the news here we got the eu playoffs we just had the na playoffs uh eu playoffs are actually going to start this sunday april 22nd at 10 a.m eastern um and then their second day is going to be monday the 23rd and that's going to be at 12 p.m eastern that's middle of the day for us na folks um but other than that um i'm really looking forward to having the playoffs kind of staggered in this way uh because we'll actually be able to watch and talk about some eu maybe next week we won't be you bombarded with nine billion hours of overwatch so uh that'll be fun um kyle why don't you grab number three so number three is related to our previous playoff matches um toronto esports had a huge power outage like a thousand people in the toronto area were out of power including the toronto esports gaming house so that meant they had to go to an internet cafe, I think in like some sort of snowstorm or something like that, or some sort mm -hmm. of inclement weather, um, and play their match from an internet cafe, which was good that they were able to figure that out. They did have the option to reschedule, but all kind of really feeling it at the moment, and they just wanted to play the match, so they did that. Yeah, and it was really cool that the, uh, the internet cafe, like, supported them and said, yeah, get down here, we'll hook you up. Um, mm -hmm. But moving on, we are going to go down to a little bit of OWL news. Um, Kang Volgin Mingu of Meta Gaming. Uh, that's Meta Athena and Meta Bellum. He was a coach for, for both of them, according to Liquipedia. Um, has signed with the Dallas Fuel as an assistant coach in the uh, wake of the release of their head coach. So... Um, you know, not only are players getting pulled up out of the path to pro, but down, you know, coaches are getting, you know, pulled in to take up some of these spots. So, so good for him. Um, mm -hmm. I know that was a, a team that Effect was on at one point in time. I don't believe Vulgin was there when Effect was there. Um, but if they have the same culture, uh, maybe he'll be able to bring a little bit of that over to the Dallas Fuel because I know they could really use kind of a culture shock right about now uh Kyle, yeah. why don't you grab this next one for us um next bit of news is regarding open division and that broadcast gg will be casting the open division matches for the upcoming season um signups are open on broadcast.gg's twitter feed they have a link there um, which is great for us because it means we'll be able to watch some open division we'll probably only watch maybe one game every like couple of weeks just to see like we'll hopefully wait a couple of weeks to see who the best team is or best couple of teams uh, and watch some of those matchups. So it'll be nice to kind of see who is likely going to come up through trials and then kind of battle that out for those couple of contender spots. And it, as somebody that's been paying attention as much as you can to the Open Division previously, not being able to watch any of them because none of them were streamed, I am super excited to be able to watch some open division and see basically guys like me and Kyle out there trying to work their way up to face off against, you know, the guys in Envision and Toronto Esports. Um, it, I just think it's really cool 
Like, it's super awesome. Um, but that's going to take us to the next bit of news, which is a little bit more open division news. You're going to start to get a lot of that with contenders winding down and open, you know, starting back up. Um, open division matches for round one and two um, are this coming weekend, Saturday, 421 and Sunday, 422. And though that whole schedule has been released, we're going to start the season off with 665 teams. Um, that ends up being 332 full matches, and then there's going to be one team a week uh, getting a bye unless teams start to drop out, and then they'll they'll adjust as the weeks go on. But it's going to be a big one. Um, I haven't even looked at the EU and Korean uh, Open Division, but I know last time they were bigger than NA, and NA this year is bigger than or well, this season is bigger than the last season. So uh, expect to hear a lot about, you know, a ton of open division teams in the near future, just all over Twitter and everything. Uh, so Kyle, why don't you grab our last bit of news before we head into the quick play? So last bit of news is Mayhem Academy. I don't know. Is this the, uh, the analyst that they literally got like a week or two ago? Or is this a different one? I think this is a different one. Okay. Because they just lost, Mayhem Academy lost their analyst third who apparently left on good terms due to personal reasons and scheduling issues. Um, but they just got a <laughs> analyst, and now they just lost one, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. I looked into him a little bit, and uh, it has him listed as 18 years old. So, like, uh, he might have, <laughs> like, schooling issues or something like yeah. that. So. Um, he did say that he was going to continue to root for the Florida Mayhem and Mayhem Academy. So uh, good on him. I mean, yeah. Mayhem Academy, you know, they did their thing. Like they made it into the playoffs. They don't have to worry about relegation. Mayhem's still working on on their schedule upcoming, but they're starting to look a little bit better. So, um, but hopefully everything goes good for him and he's able to get back into the esports scene here shortly. Um, but with that, we're going to move down into the quick play. Now see, pretty soon we're going to have bumpers for all these so I can play the bumpers while I'm moving my screen around and it's not just dead air. It's going to be awesome, guys, I promise. Uh, so, uh, Kyle, why don't you grab the final week of Korean regular season matches and let us know how everybody did. Cool. So on Monday, uh, April 16th, we saw... Kangdu Panthera 4-0 the team Blossom and Runaway 4-0 Foxes. And then on Tuesday, April 17th, we saw a 3-2 win from MVP Space over WGS Laurels 9. Element Mystic taking a 4-0 victory over Meta Athena. And then earlier today, we saw X6 Gaming take a 3-1 over Metabellum and 7 take a 4-0 over O2 Ardon. There's a lot of numbers in that last <laughs> matchup. Yeah, there was. Oh man, some of these team names. If it if it's not a bunch of numbers, it's just really, really so many weird. words. WGS Laurels Nine. What does that mean? Are there eight other Laurels teams? And what does WGS stand for? Yeah, no well, one it, knows. It, it's like it's a mystery. We're gonna have to start googling these teams, and then googling yeah. the teams inside of the teams that are behind the team. Like it's Inception. It's crazy. It's let's let's get into this week's matches. Uh, so yes. Sunday, April fifteenth, we started off. The first week of NA playoffs with Toronto's Esports versus NRG. Um, Kyle's prediction was 3-0 in favor of Toronto Esports. My prediction was 3-0 uh, in favor of Toronto Esports. And we almost got there. It was 3-1 in favor of Toronto Esports. NRG was able to squeak a map out. Um, so, Kyle, what's your analysis on this? So, Ilios, we saw Ruins take uh, be taken by Toronto Esports 100-0. Well as well, taken 100 zero by Toronto Esports. They're looking really solid there. Um, Numbani was Toronto Esports 4-3 to three as well. They were able to, to cap in overtime. Uh, not overtime, but like second push. Horizon went to NRG for reasons I will explain. And Dorado went 2-1 to Toronto as well. Um, so on the side of Toronto Esports, their backline needs a little bit of help here and there. Shu got EMP'd quite a bit and instantly roasted, so we kind of want to see some more of that, like, Gods-esque, like, Diva peel, maybe. Um, or at least maybe some more Lucio presence, helping Shu not get completely annihilated instantly. Um, Dalton did a phenomenal job sneaking in the payload on Nambani 3rd to cap it out, which was super awesome to see. As well as he's just been on fire with double pulse bombs to take Numbani 1st on the 2nd. 
the second take, I believe it was. Um, and then they also had great target calling on the on the reinforcements coming in there as well. As well as the, the coolest, uh, the recall tire bait um, on Horizon Lunar Colony where he was stuck mm-hmm. in that like top right little stair room on the far right side of point B. The tire came in there, he forced it out, it exploded it, and then immediately uh, recalled out to have the tire do basically nothing. And then he ran around and pulse bombed the Winston as well and got the kill. So he's just been on fire with the pulse bombs. Um, on the side of NRG, they did a Risa Widow on well and did not work very well at all. And then they didn't really have a good tracer to shut down Dalton. Um, they tried to do what they could, but overall it just was not as... You, know, it, it, you need a good tracer. It's kind of like playing against New York. Like You need a good tracer to, to keep back Saviolbi. It's like Dalton's the same way, basically. Um, Smex is always looking like one of the best players on this team at the moment. He lo- always looks phenomenal on Hog. Always looks really, really good on Diva as well. Um, they almost got a... They do run a lot of um, Arisa Torb Junkrat Sombra defense on Horizon, and it almost full holds, which is really solid from them. They do a lot of Junkrat play, uh, does energy, and... It got him the win on uh, Horizon because the total mayhem, which is Junkrat's passive ability, where once he dies, he drops a bunch of bombs, got a double kill, which was hilarious. And, and that was, like, how they got the, the the extra point. And it literally, like, confused the desk. It was hilarious listening to the desk say, I think this is the first time anybody's gotten a double kill on stream with total mayhem. It was awesome. I yeah. found it hilarious. Yeah, but that's that's what I got for that matchup. Um, really, the only thing I wanted to add was uh, Stratus over on Numbani. He had a series where um, during their first attack, he he got off two hex, and like they it was like literally as soon as the second hat came up he he was already working on it. Um, he was able to uh, hack uh, Axiom. Uh, before he was able to jump back out and get heals, which then just left him dead in the water. And then uh, Cruz comes in for the res, and as soon as Cruz gets over there and Mercy's hand goes up, it's just, nope, hacks the res, drops the Mercy, and then they take the point. Um, So, Stratus... We've said it before. He looks, you know, great doing some of this stuff. Um, he loves him some some Sombra. That is for sure. Uh, but it it's good seeing NRG not be the NRG of old. Like, th- the guys that they got going on, I really think that um, we, will, we will see some of the guys on this NRG picked up maybe in pairs um when the expansion teams come on i know that uh uh nate nanzer was just out doing a huge U- european tour so um we we're probably going to start to hear tricklings of you know new expansion teams coming in and uh, it's pretty exciting i i got a feeling stratus i believe he's of age i i think he yeah. is i think definitely the tank line with Smex and Butcher is a pretty solid combo. Obviously not as good as your your God's Panker combo. And then maybe the uh, Fozix and Rob Deb support duo would be a decent pickup as well. I don't know. Stratus is solid, but um, whoever the other, the newer DPS is, is just like the... Stratus is kind of... His hero pool is kind of leaving a little bit to be desired, I guess. He only really plays Junkrat and... Uh, Sombra at a decent level that I've seen. His Genji is, I think, okay. I don't remember too much about it, though. Yeah, they brought in Poise to take over the uh, the Tracer uh, Genji, which um, mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of hurt them. Uh, yeah. Losing you know, probably their, their best DPS right before the playoffs, but, you know, it's going to happen in, you know, this farm the system. Yeah. Um, but we're going to move into the second match of Sunday, and that was a big one um we had envision versus xl2 academy um kyle had this going 3-1 to envision i had this going 3-2 to envision and man these guys did not disappoint it went 
to five. We got it three two in favor of Envision, and it was exciting. So Kyle, what do you got on this one? So it started off looking like I would be right. It like from what I saw, it started off with Envision uh, taking Shrine on Nepal a hundred to ninety, and then Sanctum in a very dominant hundred to zero, and then XL two straight rolled on Numbani, which I thought was kind of interesting. I think that was a three zero. And then um, Hanamura was uh, taken by Envision, 2-1. And then Dorado was where it kind of turned into a whole thing um, with XL2 taking it. I think it was 4-3, but I feel like it was not exactly that. No? Maybe it was. I believe it was. Okay. And then finally on Oasis, Gardens went to Envision, 100-42. Uh, and then City Center was 199 we're going to envision to give them the win, but players wise and team wise, envision uh, they've been looking really solid because even when Buds uh, or even when Jaro Sombra got like stifled a lot, Buds was able to kind of take that pick up the extra slack on Tracer and do what he needs to do. Um, Jaro doing really good EMP and hack work on Genji's um, to not let them dash basically, which a Genji during Dragon Blade that can't dash is a Genji that you can pretty much just pop down because you, have, you know, probably already used Deflect. You, like, it's hard to be a Genji and not be able to dash and, and get get uh, quality blades. Um, Buds on Widow has been looking really, really solid. He was the reason that was 100-0 on Sanctum. Jaro has been doing a phenomenal job of whatever XL2, and they did it quite often because you have Mangachu on that team. Whenever they ran a Pharmacy combat or a combo, Jaro's always up there with his blade, just like, hey, I'm in, I'm here with you guys, how's it going? Slash, slash, dash, dash, everyone's dead. Um, they had great looks of alt management on uh, Hanamura, using only two per fight, which is super phenomenal, because you almost always have two alts up if you only use two per fight. Uh, Buds has been doing work on Widow again, uh, this time on Dorado. I am really thinking he might be the best contender's widow specifically for na i want to see a little bit more going forward but i think he he has what it takes to kind of be crowned the best widow at the moment um even even uh, though he played against um nene who went really really ham and then flower who has a big name on widow but i haven't seen much from him so it's kind of hard to tell if he still got it or you know how that's gonna go um Buds and Jaro came up clutch to cap Dorado third. It was, that was a nutty battle itself because they were almost not even going to cap, and then they lost like two or three. And they were the reason that they were able to uh, even finish it out to continue into extra rounds. And then on the second push, Buds on Widowmaker was so pocketed. He had hmm. Zenyatta when he was low transcend around him to keep him alive, and the constant mercy pocket with the damage boost was the reason that they were able to push so far on their second push, and Buds came up clutch and won City Center for them as well. Huh. That was just Envision, too, so I got a little bit on XL2 as well. Uh, they're doing a good job of keeping Bu uh, keeping Jaru away on Sombra. They not, didn't let him get too close. They did a good job of playing around it, not giving him too many like big hacks. Um, Clone Man had the amazing Primal Rage knockoff on Jaru uh, on Umbani, where he had Dragon Blade up and got knocked off twice. He ran up once and got knocked off again. Um, it was the reason that they were able to cap that first point. Goliath had three kills on the May on Hanamura during stall, which was awesome to see. Uh, one thing I do want to... We mentioned this previous week, uh, is that they've been figuring out a little bit better where to play, like, Megachu versus Nene versus Flower. Except Hanamura, you, I think you have to play someone else other than Megachu because his soldier is not that great, and you kind of have to run soldier on that second point if you're on attack. So they need to figure out how to do that because Megachu's soldier yep. was not that great. Um, and of course, that same attack, there was also a phenomenal C9. Um, that was just a timing issue. They're like going into attack, and they totally had the time, but the Tracer got there slightly late, and it just kind of went bad. Um, and that's kind of what I have on those notes on XL2. And uh, really, the only thing I want to bring up is um, 
you brought up the one environmental kill that I was going to talk about for a second because I figured you were going to because it was phenomenal when uh, Clone Man throws Jaru off the side and then just stands there and kind of stares at him. But he actually was able to get another environmental kill with a Primal Rage over on Dorado on Buds during the uh, during their attack. And it's in that small little area right before point two in between the the little like couch area and the steps leading up into the second point off to the mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. he primal raged and then just three times knocked <laughs> uh buds straight back off of the ledge uh it's it's not very often you're seeing a monkey get environmental kills like that in in some of the weirder spots too um and then jaru over on oasis um he had a hack on midnight he hacked midnight so he could get past him and get in range of clone man to drop the emp to cover like the whole team it was on um gardens um and literally the hack to emp combo and then the rest of the team just came in and wiped him out and it's like the the thought to drop him behind the diva hack the diva run past her and drop the emp it was like he was thinking like miles ahead of everybody <laughs> right there he was like no i'm getting this emp and i'm getting everybody uh and they did they took everybody out and they were able to i believe that's when they uh took the point back and actually popped it over for the 100 it was phenomenal mm -hmm. but that's going to take us down into our first match of tuesday night and that's fusion university versus mayhem academy um kyle had this going to fusion university 3-0 i had it going fusion university 3-1 I put a little too much faith in F Mayhem Academy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fusion took it 3-0 in a stunning amount of time. I, I'm, I'm going to put it this way. It's like a 40-minute match. Yeah, if you, if you go to the VODs on Twitch, they have each map broke up, and then they have the whole series. The whole series is an hour and like one minute long. Now, mind you, that's with every desk break. That's with Pauses. the, the like, 10-minute, like, they talk a little bit after the second map, and right. then they do the 10-minute half time, and then they talk a little bit before the next map. So, literally, it was, like, 38 minutes total for Fusion to just say, we're done with you, Florida. Let's go to Poland. Like, yeah. it was amazing. Um, but Kyle, what do you have on probably the quickest series yeah. of contenders? I have four notes on each <laughs> team, uh, but we'll break down the maps real quick. It was Nepal first, Sanctum went to Fusion University 100 to 60, Village same, but 154. Hollywood was two to one. They got held before second point, or no, yeah, something like that. Um, and then Horizon 1-0, full hold, always good to see. FU has been showing a little bit more composition changes, which I have uh, kind of ragged on them previously for doing. They only ran Genji Tracer or uh, uh, Tracer Sombra. But now they're doing a little bit of Widow Junkrat, which is always awesome to see with Who Are You on the Junkrat and um, Zachary on the Widow, which is always, like, new looks are good to see. It gives you more things, more options as a team. So you can't get, like, if, if one team is just so anti-dive, you can't do anything against it. Well, now you can try some Widow Junkrat or whatever. Um, they're really good at taking advantage of disjointed dives. So if they see, like, four people go in a backline on its own, cool, just hop in, kill both supports, and we won the fight. Um, they ran a ton of Sombra Tracer, and it looked a little bit better than it did previously, but still not amazing. And the one thing I do want to note that they've been running a lot of, that other teams haven't, is uh, Attack Anna on a lot of different places. I think they ran it on Horizon, which not a lot of teams do. And Elk with the Bionades is like half the reason they were able to cap first point on their first push like they did. Um, it just, it 
it does so much, especially when you're running against like really dug in comps. The Anna just like if you're banking a lot on the ability to soak up damage, uh, well, when you can't heal that damage up because you're bionated, well, you're done. Uh, Mayhem Academy, on the other hand, ran tanks and uh, on village, like you do on village. You just run tanks. But they didn't have point pressure at all. They, like, walked off, and then Fusion University was able to, like, cap the point when there was, like, four people left alive, which you cannot do if you're running tanks on village. You need to just live there. You need to go to the, the little farmhouse, like we saw some other teams do previously. Go to the farmhouse, wait for the point to unlock, run on with all of your Moira healing, stick there, and then never leave, or at least maintain at least one person on. Um, and then Mikey A switched to McCree quite a bit, which was pretty good at shutting down the Tracer, but still wasn't doing enough. Um, and then Paintbrush has been going for the really aggro reses and continually getting shut down. So he needs either tons of more protection from the Diva Winston, or he needs to just not go for them. If you're gonna, like, turn a one-down fight into a two-down fight every time, you need to find a better way to do that. Um... And then the other thing that was so odd is that on Horizon, the other reason that it, they got full held was they just, they took a literal full minute before anyone goes to attack the actual point. They were like posturing, like, okay, well, I'm going to go outside. Wait a second, hold on. I'm going to come back inside. I'm going to go left-hand side. I'm just going to stand here, go all the way almost to the second point, grab a health pack. What are you all doing? Like, you just lost a full minute on your time, and then as they go in, Mikey A dies immediately. Like, okay, we'll pack it up, guys, turn around, that fight's over. Like, they just need to figure out what the heck they're doing. They're just kind of indecisive. Oh, yeah, definitely. There was there was some questionable series on my hand, um, sorry, Mayhems. I keep wanting to call them Miami. I wrote it in my notes like three times and had to change it. Uh, in Mayhem Academy's uh, whole setup. Um, but the, really the only thing that uh, I wanted to say is um, on Nepal, who are you? Actually was able to blow himself up with his pulse bomb. Uh, just a funny little thing. It was it was called out by the casters too. Oh, I think the diva um, like ran into him too, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> The diva got stuck. He's like, ah. she was like, if I'm going, you're coming. Um, <laughs> and then uh, where was my other one? Oh, down on um, Horizon. When the uh, Fusion University was doing their attack, uh, Zachary was on the uh, Sabra. And who are you was on the Tracer. And the tank line pokes their head out. Up in the front, all the focus is on them. They only need one tick. And who are you and Zachary literally get like a quarter of the tick before anyone realize, hey, they're standing on the point and we're all looking at the tanks like idiots. <laughs> so then half of the team backs out and drops down. And then the whole tank line, the rest of the, the team just roll in. And it was like from the moment they realized that... They were standing on the point and getting free percentage to the time they won. It was like 12 seconds. Like, because they just rolled in behind them and just started ripping people out. And was like, nope, you're dead. Nope, you're dead. All right, we'll take our one tick and win this and just close out the, the series and yeah. you know, finish it up. Um, it's kind of an essential thing for teams defending on Horizon. Is like, you need to figure out if you're running the Orisa Junkrat with like a, a D.Va... Or Roadhog, you need to have obviously your your soldier, or your widow up there behind the research shield, maybe like your your Zen as well. But then when the two, because obviously like it's gonna happen, you're gonna have double flankers. Yep. If they're not running tanks, they're gonna run a double flanker defense, and they're gonna push the flankers left around, go to the point, and then need someone to go there. The diva or the Roadhog is almost usually the one that has to go in there, but they need to like be there quick, because especially when you're on your overtime or you know a full hold push. You have one tick to give. You need to have some sort of presence there because you can get it snuck out. And then even when you have the one go, you don't just send your whole team back because then the other four members of the team are running up the right hand side. And now if you're like looking at the point, there's four people behind you with like a bio nade, some Zenyatta orbs, and your whole team's dead. So they need to work a little bit better on like, okay, well, the Roadhog or the Diva just goes over and kind of occupies the point a little bit. Line of sights. 
the attacking team while keeping pressure on the somber tracer. It's just kind of a, a, an essential thing to do if, if you don't want to get completely steamrolled on Horizon. Yeah, even if they just like they designate literally one person to just, just pay attention there. and yeah. like, I mean, maybe not even like have to stand there, but pay attention. Like, I guess with like a diva, yeah, you just like jet there and like, okay, well they're like they keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Oh, they're there now. Let's go hang on, and and contest it for a second yeah because literally that's all it would take is one person like one like you said one of the tanks drops down and you've got the tracer and the the somber down there you just mess with them long enough to for your team to rotate around but i, I mean we even saw it a little bit later in the gladiators uh optic game where they were sneaking around and getting like percentage for free because no one was paying attention to the flankers um mm -hmm. i i really think that come season two these teams will notice this in their vod reviews of the previous season like hey maybe we should actually pay attention to the point and right. not just hold high ground because high ground's great but the point is what's important and they just not paying attention to it um but we're gonna roll into the final uh, matchup of the first week of playoffs, and that's Gladiators Legion versus Optic Academy. Uh, Kyle had this going Gladiators Legion 3 1. I had this going Gladiators Legion 3 1. Where did the tanks go? Where did we go wrong? <laughs> um, I like, I won't even call I, it on yeah. the tanks. I know, like, I saw God's, like, he was, he tweeted out that. Like, he failed. I, I don't think he did. Like, I honestly believe that the DC on Horizon Lunar Colony was an absolute, like, kick in the morale. Because they were at 98%. Like, they were they were gonna get it. I, well, they weren't at 98% when the DC happened. But they were, like super dominant like they were just going and then the dc happens so i think that just kind of changed people's mindset on the gladiators and they started playing a little bit different after that um but it did go to five optic took it in uh three two so kyle what did you have for this matchup so looking at nepal first map it <sighs> Like that was where I'm like, okay, yeah, this is gladiators. This, I mean, they maybe maybe optic can get one because the first map on village, 152, pretty solid. Shrine, 100 to zero. Didn't even let them get on the point, at all. Uh, so I'm like, okay, yeah, this is probably three one, maybe even a three zero. Like I, you know, I kind of want to to have this be over so I can just go play some games or watch something else, or whatever. But nope. Uh, Hollywood went to optic five four. Then Horizon uh, Legion took it to one. Dorado back Optic three one, and then Lighthouse Ilios hundred to thirty four went to Optic, and then Well super dominant hundred to zero as well by Optic, which is why they won that. Had it been um, Oasis, might have gone the other way. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Um, looking at team wise though, Gladius Legion first. They ran a ton of Junkrat, and, like, this was one of the things that, like, normally when you run a Junkrat and your team loses, you're like, oh, they shouldn't have run the Junkrat. No. The Junkrat was, like, the best look they had, because Blase is just, like, the Jake of contenders, nonstop running it. He's either <laughs> running that or sometimes, like, 10% Genji. Um, but he gets so much space. Like, he, he clears so much room, because they can't go into this hallway, they can't go onto the point, and so... Because the Junkrat mines are there all the time, always controlling the space, giving your team a lot more to work with. Corey's Tracer. Corey is playing against Sharp, who is the, probably tied with the best Tracer in Contenders with Dalton. Uh, and Corey goes against that and wins a lot of Tracer battles, keeps Sharp pretty suppressed. Um, it's just been looking a lot better. He didn't look as great in the first couple of weeks of the main season, but now as it's getting into playoffs, he's really starting to, to pick it up. And then here's a play that I I don't even know if you may have noticed because I legit like paused. I'm like, wait a second, what happened there? Rewatched it four times to figure out what the heck happened on the almost to the second point of Hollywood. 
Um, Sharp comes in, tries to stick onto Adam on the Mercy. Like, it looks like the bomb is on the Mercy. You turn around, and instead, Corey gets a pulse bomb somewhere else and gets two, or gets, like, one kill, and then um, someone else dies. I'm like, wait a second. What happened to... Why didn't Adam die there? So, like, I look back. I'm like, oh, my God. Panker dives in, places the... Like, Adam is running into the little doorway, into the saloon from the back area near the... Um, the where the second point is. Mm-hmm. Adam runs in there, and then literally like a foot outside is the edge of the bubble. So like Adam goes here, the bubble is here, and then Sharp runs in, hits the pulse bomb, sticks it onto the inside of the bubble. Which was like, I don't know if that was intentional, but if it was, was one of the most like big brain plays I've ever seen in my life. Because you just saved your mercy with a bubble, which is so like, in terms of like, your risk versus your reward is so great. Um, so that was incredible. Another thing that was really, really good is a six-minute hold on point B of Horizon. Um, the Zen died. Rolf got killed by Sharp like five, six different times, and they were still able to, okay, well, Zen's down, but Zen can respawn. Let's just maintain point pressure, try to get picks where we can. Their back line is now dead. Cool, we just deflected them again for six minutes. Um, and when Sharp wasn't killing Rolf a ton... Rolf was destroying the flankers. Rolf has gotten, like, so many kills. Because he got a lot of pressure on him. And few Zens are able to take out a Genji and then take out a Tracer, like, on his own. So props to Rolf for being able to do that. And then props to, to Legion as a whole for when Smurf was nano-boosted on Winston, on Dorado. He dove in, and in literally a second dead just insert roasted all six members of the team just turned on the winston and shred him so they're like i don't there's a couple of reasons why um optic won in a three two and i don't think it's too much to blame on the legion like playing bad making terrible stupid mistakes it was like very minor mistakes that got optic the win um and like just incredible play from keller and sharp and gray as well um Really, those are the only three names I have on here, on my notes for them. Um, Sharp usually got, like, two or three kills to start it off. Uh, specifically on Nepal. And Mayhem was kind of unable to... Or not Mayhem. Optic is is kind of unable to convert on those kills. And I said it's starting to show, sh- uh, show shades of Mayhem Academy. And that, like, the same with Mike Yeh getting, like, two kills. But then they still lose the team fight. Um, Keller was going ham on Hollywood on attack, and they did a good job of forcing positional errors with the Pharah. And then they did the exact same on Widow on point two as well. So Keller's just been looking a little bit better than he has in previous days. Um, Gray as well on their second attack got two great picks to give them that win. Um, let's see. Le- <laughs> Legion took two full ticks on Horizon, which is kind of weird. Again, with the whole point pressure thing. Um, this is part of the reason that Gladiators were able to win uh, Horizon. is because they just did not maintain point pressure and give them two full ticks. Uh, Pulse Bomb double kill on Horizon to hold B. Another great sharp moment. Keller was basically the reason they were able to take Dorado. Because he just won every Widow v. Widow and just shut down uh, Corey. And then um, Sharp at the very end of Dorado just destroyed the entire team and was the reason they were able to get that third point there. So it was just like Sharp had a phenomenal game and then, but like he normally does, but Keller kind of stepped up a little bit more as well as Gray having some great moments here and there as well. Meanwhile, the rest of Optic just played well as well. So that was kind of like the reason that I think that may have gone to three and why Optic took it. Oh yeah. Um, And really the only things that I wanted to bring up is, um, <clears throat> there was a uh, a moment. I'm not sure it's in here somewhere. Um, oh, it was on on Village. Uh, Rolf might have might as well have been a sniper because oh yeah, yeah. He, he was just like oh I see a pixel of Sharp's head here. Let me do a f- right click and just bing 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 dead. Sharp's gone. Like, and it, it was constant. It was literally 
you, you wouldn't even see anybody on the screen, and then it would just be, oh, Rolf eliminated so and so, and it's like, all right, baby Jonak, like what's going on? <laughs> Uh, yeah. w w where did this come from? Um, and then over on the uh, Envision side. Sorry, it's down on the bottom of my notes. Um, there was a part on Well where uh, Sharp comes in and just destroys Rolf. Like, right as they're getting ready to start the, the engagement. And I don't know what happened but they freaked out and dropped sound barrier and it was like it was unneeded like mm -hmm. it, it was a complete waste you were going to have a little bit of time to get back and try one more time you could have engaged with it but now you're doing a 5v6 with your sound barrier and just getting picked off and it was like it's almost like the legion at that moment was so scared that they just completely forgot man we have time to come back um, so Sharp was playing out of his mind. It was fun to watch him just do his thing. Um, but again, Corey and and Blase, phenomenal DPS yeah. duo. They were they were doing their thing. I can't wait to be able to watch these guys again. Um, hopefully, we can get to talk to a couple of them. Um, but man contenders was exciting up through the playoffs and the playoff matches some of the playoff matches were better than some of the the overwatch league matches that have been going on like just intense um i i hope that you know more people start to tune in and and watch them um but that's gonna wrap it up for the week one section of the playoffs so now we're going to go down into the speculation station and uh give our semi-finals predictions which have now changed a little bit because of our uh, our bracket snafu. So um, on day one, we've got Toronto Esports versus... I'm sorry, not day one, but the first matchup is Toronto Esports versus Envision. Um, I have that going to Toronto Esports 3-2. Kyle has it going to Toronto Esports 3-2. Uh, Kyle, why don't you grab the second match of the semis? Um, I don't have an actual time for this one, but it's after the first match, so just stick around, don't change Twitch feeds afterwards. Um, it's Optic versus Fusion University. I have it going 3-1 to Fusion. Uh, Thorn has it going 3-2 to Fusion as well. And then, I think with that, even still, with our snafu of our previous bracket, we still have uh, Fusion and Toronto going to the finals, and I think we still both agree that Toronto takes it based off of their um, different looks and, and better kind of uh, flexibility as a team, even though Fusion is, like, phenomenal at dive. So is Toronto, but they can also do more. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, even with the the dominant performance against uh, Mayhem Academy, I really think that uh, Toronto's still going to take it. Um, it's it's going to be exciting. It's going to be really exciting to watch. Um but uh, T Toronto is literally the complete package. Like they, they just move together. It's like they're they're mind melded. They they're think very Boston the same. like. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Well, I mean, Huck came from Toronto esports. Yeah. Like so, essentially the, again, I'm, I'm going to use the culture. The culture from Toronto esports is in Boston. Mm -hmm. And that's why Boston picked up Toronto Esports to run their academy team because they know what, I mean, Huck knows what they're doing up there. He likes their system, and he knows that anybody that trains in that system and is brought up through the way that they're taught and they're played and they're utilized will be able to plug right into Boston, and it'll it'll be like they've already been playing together because they're going to be running the exact same stuff. Um, so, I mean... Again, Boston, in the beginning, everybody was looking at them like, who are these people? What's going on? This team is going to be dead last. And I mean, right now they're sitting in the top four for this stage. You know, they're middle of the pack for the uh, the, the the grand finals or the, the big playoffs. So, I mean, Huck was thinking miles ahead of everybody. And 
he was probably thinking about the academy teams before people even had any thought that there was going to be academy teams. He was probably like, I want to pair with Toronto. Um, but yeah, like I, do we know for sure that it's Sunday the 22nd? I don't know exactly. I don't know where I got that. I think I got that from um, Wikipedia, I believe. I've seen it on Liquipedia, but I didn't see anything on the official contender site, uh, which no. is it's a little confusing because the EU uh, information is on the contender site, but the NA mm-hmm. information isn't. So hopefully it's on the 22nd. Definitely tune in for those matches if it is if not it's probably going to be the following weekend um but whatever oh no it's not gonna be the 20 the 20 seconds this weekend that's not gonna happen that Uh, that is definitely wrong so don't believe that at all i think it's going to be in like two three weeks honestly now i did see a tweet from elk uh he was on a plane with his overwatch bag between his legs and his passport in his hand he's Um, in la actually i saw that his follow-up oh. tweet is him. He's in LA going to watch the Philly game tomorrow or today. Tomorrow. Okay, so maybe that's it's different. Maybe that's what that's it was. what that was. I believe he yeah. was going it's, down. I don't think they're going to leave just yet because they still have to do the the playoffs for, um, for EU, which we're going to talk about. But yeah, I, I I don't know when the. I don't know. I don't know what's happening, man. I don't know anything. I, it it would have been nice to have a little bit more clarification like they didn't get the news out as as quickly i mean we found out on stream on sunday that Mm -hmm. it the land portion was going to be played in poland um but do do we really think they're going to play just the finals in poland like it would seem a little i don't know excessive for just the finals yeah you do i mean they that's what the way they did it at um last season they did quarterfinals uh semifinals finals that's at, what I would assume. Land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe we will see. And I'm kind of hoping that they'll do, they'll schedule it to where the the NA and the EU finals are kind of there together. Because I know mm-hmm. EU finals last uh, contenders were here in the U.S. So maybe that's kind of what they're going to do. They're going to alternate uh, regions for the finals. Um Right. But speaking about EU, we're going to go down into our predictions, our, our bracket of the EU uh, playoffs. So, Kyle, why don't you grab yours? This time, we actually have slightly different matchups. Yes. Uh, so, first off, we have British Hurricane taking on Young and Beautiful. I have this going to the Hurricane. Um, they just have more infrastructure behind them. They have a bit more wins, I believe, as well. And from what I've seen, the team that became British Hurricane, who I cannot remember who they were. Those guys. Those guys, yes. They have been a phenomenal team for quite a while. Young and Beautiful has kind of had some roster issues. Um, they just don't look as solid. I think British Hurricane are just one, just the better team. And they're going to go against the winner of CIS Hope versus Orgles at Hungary. And I think that's going to CIS Hope. Um, a lot of big names on the team that have been doing pretty solid as well. Orglis is a good team, but I just don't think they're good enough to go against and win that matchup. Um, Eagle Gaming versus Giganti. I have pretty strong in favor of Eagle. I think they're undefeated so far in contenders. Um, Giganti has not been doing as well. And Angry Titans versus Copenhagen. I think Copenhagen's like 0-5 and and Angry Titans is like 3-2. Something along those lines. So I have that going to them as well. Next level is Hurricane versus CS Hope. I have that going to Hurricane. And then Eagle Gaming versus Angry Titans, I have going to Eagle as well, with Eagle Gaming taking it over Hurricane in the finals. We we're not going to do, like, breakdowns of, of map wins because we don't know enough about these teams at the moment. But based on from what I've seen, Eagle Gaming just looks like the best team to me. Yeah. Um, the, like Kyle said, uh, we haven't watched very much, if any, of the EU stuff. I've, I think I've caught like a half of a match here and there. Um, so I'm going solely off of um, the win differentials and the opponents that they have won and lost against. So mine is slightly different. Uh, 
British Hurricanes versus Young and Beautiful. I do have the Hurricanes advancing and CIS Hope versus Orglis and Hungry. I also have CIS Hope advancing. So me and Kyle are on the same page with uh, the top of the bracket. Uh, Eagle Gaming versus Giganti. I have Eagle Gaming advancing um, because they are the only team that is currently undefeated in EU contenders. Uh, no one has beat them. Um, Angry Titans versus Copenhagen Flames. Now, this is where things change slightly. Um, I have the Copenhagen Flames beating uh, Angry Titans here. And the reason I have that going like that is, let me make sure that I say this correctly. Um, Angry Titans were 3-2. and two. They lost to the British Hurricane. That's understandable. I get that. But their second loss was to... That's a disband. And that's a disband was essentially by week of EU. So... That's true. There's a... We don't know. It's it's one of those we don't know which angry titans we'll see. Are we going to see mm -hmm. the team that drops a map or a, a, a whole series to that's a disband or, you know, puts up a 3-2 fight against British Hurricane. Like, they took Hurricane to the distance, but then they lose 3-2 to that's a disband. That, so. that was week one, though. So I think that it could be like a, like, from then they, they took it 3-2 to British Hurricane, and then from there it was like a 4-0. Um, I think another 4-0... Like, I think that they, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I think that they, I think that they win this. I don't know. It's, I, your point makes sense, but I think the whole week one versus week, like, three, four, five is, is going to yeah. get them the win. Um, so then that leaves me with Copenhagen Flames. Um, their loss was to CIS Hope. And uh, Eagle Gaming. So, obviously, they're going to lose to Eagle Gaming. Eagle Gaming is the best team. And CIS Hope is the second best team. Um, so, in my brain, that's just kind of how that works out. So, uh, I have in the next tier, Hurricane versus CIS Hope. And I have CIS Hope taking it against the Hurricane. Uh, and then Eagle Gaming versus Copenhagen Flames. We've already seen uh, Copenhagen Flames lose to the Eagle Gaming. I believe Eagle Gaming is going to take that. Um, the reason behind the Hurricane versus CIS Hope is... Let me make sure I get this right. It's so confusing looking at the way they have it on liquipedia I, i'm still trying to get used oh, to yeah, yeah. the little pyramid things that the they build hatch. here yeah it's weird um the only game that uh cis hope lost was to eagle gaming which mm. is the perfect the team that went perfect um and then the british hurricane their one and only loss was to Orglis and Hungry. That's fair. So they they lost to a a mid tier opponent. Like Orglis and Hungry isn't horrible, but mm -hmm. I mean they're not on the same level as like Eagle Gaming or you know even CIS Hope. So I think CIS Hope will just edge it out a little bit, which will then put us in the finals between CIS Hope and Eagle Gaming, and I believe. Eagle Gaming is going to take this. We both come to the same conclusion. I mean, they just they look dominant. You, mm -hmm. the, you go five and zero. Oh, there's a reason you go five and zero. Oh. I mean, look at Philly, or yeah, Fusion <laughs> University. That's true. That's fair. I agree with you. That makes sense. Um. So that is our bracket. I will chop that up and I will throw that up so people can see it on the Twitter feed. Um, but that's going to wrap up the main discussion. It's a short main discussion this week. We have a slightly new segment here. Uh, we're calling it Community Intel. Um, it's basically question of the week, but I mean, we're Blackwatch. 
can't just be question of the week. Come on. Gotta be all secretive sounding it's and stealthy be, and you know covert. So yeah, uh, black ops. The only thing is with our question of the week, it might not necessarily be every week. So we're gonna do community intel based on when you know interesting topics come up. We're not gonna do like really just random questions uh this question actually came up between me and kyle we were talking and we just were going over kind of you know what parts of the current contenders teams could we take to make these expansion teams that we know are coming like they're out there doing hard pushes so we know we're getting more teams for season two so my question for the community is uh using only players from contenders who would you pick to build an expansion team's six-man starting roster? Just their six-man starting roster. It could be any team. If you want to make up a team, I'll give you bonus points for that. And my points don't mean anything. So that's even better. Um, but I, mean, yeah. I think we should do this as well. I think we'll, we'll kind of compare ideas with whoever we get results from. Hopefully we can get some in the Discord. Yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to throw results. it in the Discord. I'm going to throw it up on Twitter. I'm going to see if, you know, you can answer in the Discord. Join us over there. You can answer on Twitter. If you don't want to do either one of those and you want to keep it anonymous, feel free to email it to us and we'll get it added into the show. And then we'll talk about everybody that's, uh, that send us uh, their their submissions in. Um, and then I'll do one and Kyle will do one and we'll see what kind of, you know, everybody's thinking. And this is we'll critique like, everyone that says who's got a terrible team. And now my team is going to beat Thorne's team. Cause I picked the better support line. Oh, and so there's on. no way because I've already picked the best <laughs> tanks in the game. Come on. You're crazy. Um, well, we're probably going to pick the same tanks almost yeah. without a doubt, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt <laughs> now. And this isn't restricted to NA or EU or Korea. Like if you want to go deep and you want to pick up, you know, an Australian flex tank, do it. Like, and then a South American flex support. Like, if if you feel that strong about that person and you think that they deserve the spot, and you can get us to look at them, and then to talk about them, hey, do it. I I want to learn about people in these other regions because I don't have time to watch all the games. So if somebody is like, no, this guy is awesome, I'll look into him. So uh, yeah. We'll get that set up so you guys can submit your uh, your teams, your expansion teams using, remember, only Contenders players. I, I have to be able to look them up and find them on a Contenders team. Um, but that is going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, as always, you know, we need the Twitch followers. Uh, e even if you really don't watch on Twitch, just swing by and just hit the follow button. Like, it helps out a ton um itunes reviews that's the big one um a according to to blevins we've we've got a lot of new subscribers out there let us know what you think of the show just leave a quick you know review on the itunes and uh, we'll read it out here we'll shout you out and if it's even if it's bad like if you think my audio sucks and kyle sounds funny vice versa whatever it might be i'll read it and i'll try to fix it We'll, we'll work on anything. And if you think that we're doing things great, we thank you. But we want to thank you personally. So go ahead and throw that in the iTunes for us. Um, but that is going to wrap us up completely. Uh, Kyle, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me at Twitter and Twitch at Kyle the Winner. I'm streaming lots more now. I'm going to stream literally after this as well. And do some Civ action. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I have lots of interesting stuff there. And what about you, Thorne? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Thorn Rain. Um, I really don't stream on my Twitch. I stream mostly on the Blackwatch Report Twitch now, you know, trying to push those followers. Um, which I might actually do a little bit of Heroes of the Storm after this. I'm not sure just yet. Um, but outside of that, uh, you can find the show on Twitter at Blackwatch Report, no O in report. Uh, you can email the show, blackwatchreport at gmail.com. You can follow the show on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Blackwatch Report. We, rec we record live Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Our intro music is the main theme for Overwatch covered by our very own Kyle Wynn. This has been a High Noon production. 
You can find all of our shows at highnoonpodcast.com, and you can come and chat with all of the hosts from all of the shows over at discord.me slash highnoonpodcast. And with that, Blackwatch out.